Good evening, and welcome to Real Talk, where every Sunday night we offer insight, education, and resources to in-home caregivers and those affected in their world. This is for the children, the parents, the extended family, and everyone who loves them. Our goal is to offer real-life topics and learning through discussing real issues and offering real solutions. And tonight, I'm excited to welcome back a guest that we've had on before, Heidi Jolene, who is a former INA Nanny of the Year and a nanny that's been working with children for over 20 years. Heidi enjoys creating fun, exciting, and educational activities for her charges, and that's what we're going to kind of talk about tonight, but how this can benefit you. And even taking a nod from her preschool teacher days, she's created children's lessons plans. These things are child-led and are things that are really exciting in our world as in-home caregivers. So I'm really, really thrilled to have her on here. In fact, I pursued Heidi and said, we got to get you on here and talk about this. So tonight we're going to dig into that. We're going to really look at what she's created and discuss flexible nanny lesson plans. And Heidi is going to be sharing some amazing information with you around this topic and how you can learn more about this. So first off, Heidi, welcome. We're glad to have you back. Hi, thank you. I am I am very happy to be back. I love these sessions and I, I love watching all of them, whether I can watch them live with you or, you know, afterwards. It's always so informative with each person that you bring on. So I'm very happy to be back. Cool. I, so I want you to tell us, um, normally I ask people, tell us about your introduction into the nanny world or the NCS world. I don't want to go there tonight. I want you to tell, talk to us about something that we talked about right before we jumped into this, which mm. is why you decided to create this the way that you did. Kind of share with us really the impetus behind that and your heart behind it. So why I created this that we're going to talk about tonight is I, I, I saw a niche that needed to be filled. I see, I'm sure you see it in the, in the groups. I see it in the groups. There's a lot of nannies that are constantly asking, what activities can I do here? What can I do with my two-year-old? What can I do with my three-year-old? Hey, so-and-so is off of school for three weeks. What can I do? Um, are there any lesson plans? Are there any curriculum for, um, you know, for the children out there? What do you guys use? Um, and if you Google lesson plans, you're going to get a whole bunch of lesson plans online, and they're all geared towards preschools. And so I... Um, came up with a way that was a flexible lesson plan for nannies. Um, it's something that I started years ago for myself and for the charges that I have worked with. And I um, have started writing it down. I was actually um, pre-COVID, I was trying to start uh, doing classes in Los Angeles, which is where I'm based um, with the nannies there. And then COVID hit, and obviously you can't have those type of functions in your home or wherever with other people. And so I kind of backed away from it for a while, and I thought, okay, well, maybe change this up. Why don't I do what other people are doing online and sell pre-made lesson plans? I even had a website built um, you know, with the name and I was going to sell it in bundles or separately. And I wasn't really that excited about it. I mean, I'm excited about my lesson plans, obviously, but I wasn't excited about selling those pre-made ones. What I'm excited about is teaching nannies to make their own lesson plans for their charges or for their littles. I'm excited about them learning how to do it on their own and then taking that skill to whatever family that they go to. It's, it's important that we as nannies continue our education and I'll bring that up later and things like that. But, and I also, in my class, we discussed that, but as nannies, and you know this, Tanya, that we have to continue our education. We have to stay on top of things. And so any little bit that can help us and help our charges, we should grow and learn and discover how to do that. So I love making sure that nannies can do that. And that's something that I hope to bring from these type of classes that I'll be teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I love the fact that it's not just here, use this lesson plan, but it's the how to create, mm -hmm. how to use your imagination, because I think that gives you such flexibility and such an ability to adapt to the children that you're working with and their particular needs or their learning skills. 
I just think that's huge. You, you hit it right on the head, and we talk about this in the class. Um, and I and you know we may talk about it later on today, depending on you know where we go with this. But only you know your charge. Only know, you know your environment that you're in. I don't. And while there are lesson plans out there, and I mine have ages on them, it's more a maturity level. It's a, it's a, it's you know what your charge can do from day to day. So if I hand you a two year old lesson plan. Um, your charge may not be able to do all those things on there, or maybe they're more advanced. So by you creating your own lesson plans, you're gearing that lesson plan that's child-led, that's flexible with the nanny lifestyle, but you're you're using what your charge knows how to do. And if you have multiple charges or multiple littles, whatever you want to call them, I've interchanged that word, but um, you're creating a, a, a lesson plan that they that they can use and that you can use, which then helps your day. And in the end, that's what we want. We want our day to run simple, as simple as it can get with little children running around. Yeah, there's chaos always for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so let's kind of dig into this. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what you created and kind of what it consists of. Um, your it's called flexible nanny lesson. So it is. tell us about it a little bit, and then we'll kind of talk about some specifics around it. It's So I call it a flexible nanny lesson plan because that's what it is. We are nannies, and this is geared more towards nannies. I've had parents ask to join, um, and I kind of, it, I actually do write things to the parents that try and join my group um, and explain that this is, a, this is an area for nannies, where nannies can talk um, and um, create and express their ideas and activities um, freely. Um, and so it's not a place for parents to be, even though parents want to learn, which is great. But I don't want, I want this place to be for nannies. It's flexible because we know our day to day life is not set up by, like school. And that's the difference is when I create a flexible nanny lesson plan, it's based on month. And it's not based on day, it's not based on week, it's not based on hour, it's not, it's not any of that. It is based on the activity per month on an overall theme. And it, it just makes it easier. As we know, we could walk in one day, we can walk in today's, what, Tuesday, and uh, we, could, we could have walked into work and they'd be like, hmm, well, I bring this up, but it's like in my class, I say, well, you know what? We decided last night that we're going to build a third story on our house. So all the construction workers are here right now. Now, that's obviously not really realistic, but in our nanny world, our day-to-day -day lives change. We are not set up at a school level. We're in someone else's home. So we need to be flexible with what's going on in a home-based setting, but we also need to be flexible for the child, because there are days the child doesn't feel like doing whatever. Great, guess what? There are days I don't feel like doing whatever, so we're gonna do, I don't feel like doing that. We're gonna go to the park today, if your park is open, but we're gonna go to the park today. We're gonna go to the beach. Can you learn at the beach? Yes, you can still learn at the beach, but it's kind of, it's fluid. It's a very flexible plan to follow what's going on in the nanny life. So it, it, it makes it, I don't know, I, I describe it a bit in my classes, like when you do a weekly lesson plan, which is great for everyone who does weekly lesson plans. I used to do it too when I worked in preschool. I know how it is. But you put your heart and soul and all your hours into doing a weekly lesson plan and then something happens, grandparents show up, dog gets sick, you have to run errands and you miss all those things that you planned. And then you also have to come up with 52 themes because there's 52 weeks in a year. You do a monthly lesson plan that's flexible, you have to come up with 12 themes. I can come up with 12 themes. That's easy. It, 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 I'm trying to simplify my life as well as the people that want to use this and utilize this type of lesson plan, simplify it as much as possible, but still get the best outcome. I love this idea in the sense that I've been in the nanny world for a long time. And I nannied for many years before I transitioned to being an NCS. And I knew a couple of nannies who did lesson plans years ago. And I was like, what? Who wants life to be that rigid? Because they were very, this is day and this is what we're doing today. 
And so when the first, the idea of a lesson plan came up, I was like, forget that. That, that takes all the fun out of it. If I want to do that, I'll go be a preschool teacher. I want flexibility. And so to me, what you're doing holds huge appeal because mm-hmm. it is flexible and it has that ability to flow with life, to flow with feelings and be real. Um, so that's huge. But there's an underlying question that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Why should nannies even consider creating lesson plans? Why do they matter? Uh, that's a good one. I, I do also bring that up in my classes uh, a few times. Um, there, there are many reasons why, and I will tell you one of the good reasons. I know parents listen to this. I know agencies listen to this. I know many listen to your, you know, your real talk. And I will say that in our, honey, you work in a big market. You, you know, I work in a big market area. There are other nannies that will be listening to this that are in a big market area. And really, it's the resume. If you want to stand out in a, in a huge nanny market area, it's, um, it's, you need to build up your resume. And I always tell nannies who want to come to LA, which is where I'm based, that you need to have your resume stand out. You need it to shine. So why not do the classes, the trainings, the conferences that can help your resume stand out against another nanny in a tough nanny market? So if you're at an agency and you get sent to someone and there are two nannies, you and another nanny, maybe that family loves that you create lesson plans. And I'll try to explain lesson plans in a minute because I know a lot of people don't like the term lesson plan or curriculum, but it's it's not really as tough as what it seems. Um, but you stand out. But also, if you're already employed and you start bringing in and put maybe posting on the wall that you're doing these lesson plans and your nanny parent is then turning to their friends and be like, oh, you know, my nanny, my nanny, Tanya. Yeah. My nanny, Tanya, over here, she does she does lesson plans. They're talking about um, bugs. They're they're learning. And, you know, my child, like they're they're counting the legs and they're doing this. And then the other their friends are like, wait, our nanny. Wait, how can my nanny do that? And then they discuss it. It just makes you elevate a little bit. That's one of the main reasons. The other reason, and I bring this up, is that we we have an obligation. We as nannies or NCSs, but we as nannies have an obligation to not only our charges and their parents, but we have an obligation to ourselves to be professional and committed and showing that you're doing these lesson plans and it it shows that you have a commitment to what you're doing every day. Um, another reason we can do lesson plans is that it helps your day. You have things prepared. It's not that you're sitting at a table and you're shoving flashcards down a child's throat. And I think that's where people get confused with lesson plans. That's not it. It's learning with what you have already. It means if you're going on a walk and your color of the month is red, you are going to have your little find so many red things that they can find outside. If your color or number or letter is whatever, and you have now put that around the house and they have to go on a treasure hunt to find these things, it's using what's available with that's more child-led and child-friendly. And anything to help your day run smoother is what I'm striving for (laughs) because our days can get crazy. So let's make it a little easier by having these activities and stories and, and, and co-op play and meditation play and everything already prepared for the month, but with a common theme. Why not? Yeah, I love that. And the reality is professional nannies mm-hmm. are being paid usually professional wages mm-hmm. and they need to deliver professionalism. And a big part of that, the obligation and the understanding is that we are helping educate these children. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, I mean, that's one of the things that's the distinction between a babysitter and a nanny. Correct. And it doesn't mean it has to be formal and structured and rigid. And I'm not a fan of rigidity with babies or with, with preschoolers or toddlers or anything. I'm, that's not my thing. Um, and what I'm hearing from you is this doesn't have to be rigid. This can really be something that works with your child and your day, but ultimately is a tool that makes your job easier with a better outcome. It is a tool in your toolbox. 
And you may not use all the tools in the toolbox for the month, but it's a tool in your toolbox to make the day or the month or the week, whatever, go easier. And I personally, I start lesson plans very early and people are like, oh my gosh, you start lesson plans at like, depending on the child, obviously some children you can start six months, eight months, 12 months, 15 months, whatever it is, um, depending on the child. Again, it depends on your child. If you buy something pre-made, they're gonna say one-year-old. Well, great, not every one-year-old is the same. So I start the lesson plans and believe it or not, probably most nannies already have some type of lesson plan in their head. They just don't write it down because we all have our schedules. We all have our schedules of the day where we come in, it's dressing, it's washing, it's eating, it's free play, it's going to the park, it's doing whatever. We have our schedules set with times that work with naps and whatever. But this isn't a time-based lesson plan. This isn't at nine o'clock, we're gonna be reading stories. This isn't 10 o'clock, we're doing art. No, again, this is not a weekly or a timely thing. This is a monthly, in my lesson plan, when people get the, it's just a word process, but it says like books, five books are listed under that follow the theme. Do we read more than five books in a month? Yes, we do. We know we do. We may read the same book over and over again, but we do read more than five books in a month or five songs. Um, but those might be the main songs or the main books. Those might be the books I put on the end table that we read before bed. Those might be the books that I put on the bookshelf prominently for the child to pick up. Um, songs, those might be the songs I play first if we're driving in the car somewhere because they follow the theme. We're definitely gonna do more, but these are the ones following the theme. Um, it just, I just, I like it. I like order, but chaos at the same time. And I feel like this does, it, it has the chaos and the order together. Yeah, I love that. So I'm gonna totally put you on the spot here. Um, <laughs> can you give us an example? We're gonna talk in just a second about uh, how nannies can actually find a mm -hmm. nanny lesson plan class, mm -hmm. uh, but give us an example of something, just a short one, of something that you teach in a class. Something that I teach in the class? Yeah. Okay, well, we go, we actually go over a lot of things throughout the class. Um, we talk about how color affects, we talk about the third and third teacher, which I'm sure you're familiar with, with um, Malaguzzi and, and, and all that, and how the environment is the third teacher. So, talk about that briefly as well as color now we all know that we cannot um just tear down walls in our nanny family's house and repaint the walls unless they're building great and a lot of the parents that hire us they're hiring us for our knowledge for our experience for our education and they come to us so this is the time where you as a nanny can bring in well you know what why don't we use these kind of shelving if we're going to be setting up a playroom or a play space? Why don't we use these type of colors or patterns or accent colors in the playroom or the play space? Because again, these are homes. And at the end of the day, the living room has to be the living room. The bedrooms has to be the bedroom, whatever it is. So I explain it as um, a lot of our things that we're setting up have to be like, we're living in a tiny home. They have to have two and three purposes. Um, so we talk about that a lot. We also, um, we talk about how to set up a lesson plan. We do it together. Um, we talk about how you have an umbrella topic. I play a little book that's about, it's called the big umbrella. Basically the big umbrella, there's always room when there's for things underneath it. But if you go with a small topic, let's say, um, cars. We bring this up in class too. Your child loves cars. Great. Can you do a week on cars? Yes. Can you do a month on cars? Maybe. Could you do a month on transportation or things that go? Yes. So your charge loves cars and you're doing a month on transportation. Great. Let's go outside and count cars or get the color of cars. Let's get your cars and line them up. Which cars are bigger? Which cars are smaller? Which cars go faster? When you push them, which ones go slower? Um, let's measure them. Um, but then because you're doing transportation, you're now bringing in submarines, boats, airplanes, helicopters. You've now opened up a whole new level for your, for your child and maybe a new interest. Because now maybe they love submarines as well. 
great. Now you've brought in submarines. Now it's something in the water. Now you can bring in sink and float. Now you can bring in, great, next month we're going to talk about the ocean. And we can talk about submarines in the ocean. And now we can bring in animals of the ocean. And it's just, it's endless possibility. And being having a flexible lesson plan, and I talk about this, is that if your charge or your child is finding an interest in something, great. Does that mean you move on because all of a sudden now it's summer and you want to talk about the ocean and your little one loves bugs? No, great. Still talk about bugs. You can do bugs. I did bugs for three months because my charge loved bugs. So I just found Right. You just, you just, right. I mean, but you can change it up. You can be like, great, let's learn everything about bugs. And then we can, next month, we'll talk about how bugs help our garden. Cause now we're talking about gardening and we're kind of bringing that in. So it's, it's using what they like, but also opening up the other, um, other avenues that they could, um, that they can learn from. And we all know this play is learning and so everything should be child-led so if they're finding an interest in something go with it but also open and explore other interests that they may have oh that's great and we actually just did um uh not too long ago a couple of weeks ago we did one with sue downey i don't remember exactly mm-hmm. what it was all about play so i love that you mentioned that because so many times people undervalue play mm-hmm. and, I, and i love that you're taking this idea and applying it to play mm-hmm. and putting the two together because they are so so intertwined and mm-hmm. so valuable for everything about development. So that is amazing. So let's talk some specifics. <laughs> How can people find Nanny Lesson Plan classes? If they're interested in learning more from you, how can they find this? Where where on the world do you exist? <laughs> Well, I am all around the world. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I am. I mean, I'm everywhere. Um, but I actually have a Facebook group um, geared just towards nannies. It is a private group for nannies. We have almost uh, 2,000 nannies in it right now. Um, and it gets bigger every day, which is great. It's called the Knowledgeable Nanny, Nanny Lesson Plans. Um because that's what we are. We are the knowledgeable nannies. It's not just one of us. It's all of us. As long as we're continuing our education and growing and learning, we are all the knowledgeable nannies. And so we need a space to share that. Um, so you can find it online. We do monthly um, meetups on Zoom where we talk about what the next month's active, what we have a theme already set and then everyone gets together. It's really quite, we can be anywhere. I remember I did it in a parking lot one day um, where I hosted, it's like an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how much people talk. And I'll set up the theme for the next month. And then people bring their ideas and activities that we could use together. Um, just because just to get those juices flowing. And then I also pin at the, before the month starts, I pin at the top of the group, like, place your activities for whatever, like this month was farm. Um, and we had a great nanny and, um, I won't say her name just in case, but we had a great nanny who brought up who she did. She's doing farm as well. And she did milking cows. And so what she did out of boxes, she made a little cow. It's the cutest thing ever and put a glove on the bottom with milk and had her kids milk the cow. I thought that was genius. It was so beautiful. We had another nanny who she's got younger charges and, and they did oats, uh, like leftover oats, obviously not cooked. Um, and then put the farm animals in cause they're little kids. Um, so if they ate it, it's, it's kind of okay. And, um, they could play and scoop and core and just see what happens that cause and effect. Um, so it's, it's all about that. And we do have some nannies who come in and they just, they're like, what can I do with my three-year-old? For me, it's always hard to say, well, you can do this and this and this, because again, I don't know your three-year-old. Can your three-year-old cut with scissors? Because I can give you activities for a three-year-old that can cut with scissors, but can they cut with scissors? Can your, does your three-year-old know there's certain colors and letters and numbers? I don't know. I can give you activities. So I always gear them like there are pin posts at the top with months um, and see if you see any activities up there. But I do offer, 
I did actually just have my first virtual um, class actually on Sunday. It went over well. We uh, actually oversold uh, to 21 people and um, it was great. It was amazing. Um, and so I actually will be offering the classes probably in that group first to the people in that um, Facebook group. And then, you know, after however much time, we'll offer it in the other nanny groups that we have out there. We know we have so many different options out there. Um, and I'm hoping how my schedule plays out, as I don't know usually where I um, am located. Um, I'm hoping that in May, I'll be able to have the next one um, and to see how that goes, to see if I get a good response and as many nannies, even if it was just five nannies, but still, you know, I, I wanna make sure that it, it gets a great response. Um, I do have two open forums, one on Insta Instagram and one on Facebook. They're open publicly. I usually um, gear parents towards that one. They're not as busy. I kind of have turned away a little bit from that one um, just because that's where I was going to actually sell the lesson plans that I was going to create when COVID you know, changed my mind. Um, but I don't know. It's it's not as busy as it is now because I'm, func I'm, I'm focusing more on getting nannies to create these themselves because we all can do it. We are all very creative people. And if nannies can just see how easy it is, I think a lot of times nannies and parents are thrown off with how confusing it can be because there's so many words. There's like the, I can't even say it, the detect, detest, I can't say it. You know, the pincher or whatever it is has to do this. And I need to do this so many times in order to do this. Listen, we're going to do, I keep it simple. We're doing fine motor. We're doing gross motor stories, arts, books. I threw in medication and uh, meditation and not medication, meditation and podcasts. Um, but people can change it for however it works for them. Um, you know, if you know all the correct terminology to explain to your nanny parents what you're doing and why you're doing this to cause this that helps the effects of this later on in life, then great. But I think a lot of nannies get thrown off with, I need to have so many activities that are these, you know, scissor cutting skills, which is very important, or the, you know, these fine motor skills or this certain skill. Let's just simplify it because if you are doing a pouring project, that could be gross motor and fine motor, and it's also cause and effect. And it's also, you know, it could also be independent play because they're doing it on their own. And then it's also a home skill, which I call chores, but I call chores, is, I call it home skill because, you know, easier because um, then they have to clean it up, you know, so that everything kind of intermingles with each other. Um, and that's all it is. It's to simplify your life. And so this, the Facebook group online um, is, is, is getting bigger. Um, and, you know, everyone's awesome in that group, which is great because it's all just about activities and ideas and lesson plans. And so, you know, hopefully it's, you know, it grows even more and more people understand how, how simple it can get. I think they come in the group hoping that they'll just get a lesson plan. And that's not what it is because I want them to do it themselves. Just like I want my child to do it themselves. <laughs> right. We learn more that way. It, exactly. Exactly. You can give a man a fish or you can teach a Pardon? Boy. I said it's the classic, you can give a man a fish and feed him for a day or teach exactly. him how to fish and you can feed him for a lifetime. So exactly. You know, very classic with that. Um, so is there a charge for that group, the Facebook group? I the fa no, there is no charge for the Facebook group. It is a totally open, or not open, it's obviously private, but it is a free Facebook group online. Um, you know, we just, I ask a couple questions, obviously, I can't fully vet everyone because if they say they're a nanny and it looks like they're a nanny, I, you know, the, the one requirement, obviously I check to make sure that they, um, you know, that they've actually had a Facebook account for a little while. Obviously some people just join Facebook and then they want to join groups, but usually if they have other groups or friends in common, I know, you know, they're a little bit okay. Usually a lot of people are very honest. It, you know, I ask questions like, are you a nanny? And they're like, no, I'm a parent. Like, oh, okay, well, thank you for being honest. But, you know, some people are, you know, but I, I do try and vet it as much as possible. I have some great nannies in there that they're all great nannies, but I have some great nannies who obviously, you know, as the groups grow, sometimes you get a little um, spammy stuff in there. They, you know, they report it right away to me and I, you know, get, I get rid of the post because sometimes you just don't know. Um, uh, but it really, it's an overall 
quiet, I wouldn't say quiet in a way that we, we do post our activities, but it's quiet in the way of drama. There is no drama. <laughs> So, because that's not what the group is about. It's about activities and ideas and lesson planning and, you know, things like that. So we have, you know, in the nanny world, we have all those other groups for other things. Um, so it, it's virtually quiet in that, which I like. And and everyone's usually very, very receptive on ideas and, and, and things that are put in that group. So that, one, that one's just a free Facebook group. Fantastic. So will you um, provide um, us the the link to that or is it something that somebody has to be referred to um there is a link yes i can get it for you if you would like it's on facebook um let me try and pull it up right now oh it's all right we'll we'll just um have julie okay. post it when we all right live no problem yeah, no it's it's all in all in facebook so that's great um so that one's free there is a charge for the class mm -hmm. um Right now, it's, you know, it's, we're doing it through Eventbrite, Eventbrite um, and Zoom. Um, and the, the class is set at $25 plus whatever Eventbrite, Eventbrite fee they charge, which I think is like a dollar or so. Um, so that it's just set at $25, which I, you know, it's about a three hour class or so. Um, I wasn't quite sure, like I said, yesterday was, or Sunday was the first virtual class, which we all know virtual can sometimes, you know, it's way different than in, in person. I actually like the in-person because I, I like to, I like to talk with the people and if they have questions, we can sit there and just mill it out. Whereas virtually it's a little harder. Um, but I, I, a lot of people were asking how many hours it would take. And I said about three, which we did go three, which was good. Um, uh, because you never know what happens virtually in life so but as things get, move more virtually obviously everyone gets used to that so right yep for sure so you have shared a ton of great information with us tonight and i'm really excited about this because it really to me it feels real and it feels mm -hmm. genuine and it feels doable and i think so many nannies are intimidated by this concept mm -hmm. and i think you've taken it and put it it packaged it up in a way that they actually can utilize it. They can take a hold of it and make it their own. So I love that you've done that, Heidi. That Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Is there anything else, any final thoughts you want to share with us before we wrap up tonight? Ooh. Oh, just, you know, I mean, any nanny who is considering, you know, they can reach out to me on um, social media if they have any questions. Um, I do tell anyone who takes the class or is in my group, they, they, can, they can message me anything. Um, so if you have questions about a lesson plan or the group, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I am on Facebook if they, you know, um, it does pop up eventually on my, my messages. Um, depending on what time zone I'm in, you know, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so, you know, just just know that Every nanny is doing great. Every nanny is amazing. Every nanny is a shining example for their charge. And you probably are already doing a lesson plan, a lesson plan again. I don't want people to take that as like, you know, shoving flashcards and, and letters down their throat. Um, you're probably already doing that lesson plan already. You're just not writing it down. And so hopefully I can help you open up that gate in your head and write it down even if it's on a piece of paper and know that what you're doing is correct no i love that you're doing this and frankly 25 dollars is a heck of a bargain yeah. and your one investment in a class and a bit of time and a little bit of learning mm -hmm. that can have a huge impact on your career on your higher ability and on your rate yep. so Anybody who ever looks at a class should always look at a class as an investment in themselves mm -hmm. and in their career and their future. Yep. So I love that you're doing this. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us tonight on Real Talk, Heidi. It's always and it's always fun to chat with you anyway, but it's really great to learn what you're doing and to be able to share that with other people mm -hmm. and that you're making this so accessible on thank so you. many levels. I love this. Uh, if you have any questions about this topic tonight or anything that's related to flexible nanny lesson plans, put them in the feed and tag Heidi or tag Newborn Care Solutions and we'll make sure that you get an answer. If you're watching this segment on replay or if you want to catch any of our past Real Talk episodes, along with accessing our other content, you can pop on over to newborncaresolutions.com, click on the education tab, 
and check out all of our content. You can also now find us on YouTube. Just type Newborn Care Solutions Real Talk into the YouTube search and it comes right up. So have a fantastic night and thank you for joining us, everyone. Bye.